Hi everyone, thank you for joining this presentation from MV Tech. My name is Shadi Elamat. I am doing this presentation on behalf of my colleague Adriano Biocchi. Adriano is on parental leave. Uh, congratulations, my friend. I hope you're enjoying your family time. I will be speaking today about embedded vision as a strategic choice for businesses. In this presentation, uh, I will outline the specifics of embedded vision market then highlight some key financial and technical aspects that you need to take into account when choosing the right machine vision software. To start, just a couple of words about uh, MV Tech, who we are, what we do, for the people who might not know us yet. Um, MV Tech is an independent software company, and we provide standard software for industrial machine vision applications that is comprehensive, fast, and robust. The company was founded 25 years ago as a university spin-off, and uh, we've always focused on tech and innovation. Um, just to give you an example, two-thirds of our employees have an engineering degree and work in research and development. Our customers are OEMs and uh, system integrators. Uh, they use our software worldwide in almost every market segment from agriculture to aerospace. For more details, you can check the uh, section industries and the section uh, references on our website, mvtech.com. Our software supports a very wide range of operating systems, programming languages, and hardware platforms. So customers have been facing us uh, with uh, an increased variety of use cases in connection with embedded vision and uh, new connected automation solutions. So in the next slide, uh, we will share the knowledge based on our own research as well as feedback from our customers. Let's have a look at the future of embedded vision. On the left, uh, embedded vision counts for a small but significant part of the world vision market. Based on a study from 2018 for Europe, it counts for 14% of the world market and uh, this includes vision sensors, smart cameras and other embedded systems. On the right, we see that the world vision market will be growing overall, but that the embedded part will be growing even faster than the PC-based market. There are a couple of reasons for this. Um, we've seen in the past years that embedded systems performance has been increasing continuously, and we expect this move to continue in the future. And um, the cost performance ratio has been dropping also year after year. So this leads to uh, a couple of things. Um, first, the transformation of current PC-based systems to embedded systems. So applications that have been using PC, industrial PCs, will be ported to embedded systems. And uh, secondly, we expect also more markets to open for industrial vision. Um, so no vision was used in these markets because of environmental requirements, size requirements, or cost requirements that could not be fulfilled by PC-based systems, but the move to embedded systems will allow to uh, penetrate these new markets. On a scale of one to millions units production volume, where's the sweet spot to use embedded vision systems? Low volumes, this would be typically a PC-based machine vision system while high volumes, um, these would be uh, consumer embedded systems. Um, you can think of a robotic hoover, for example. On top of that, we see also a very big unit cost difference. In low volume, it's not unusual to have uh, 5,000 users as a complete cost for PC system with hardware and software. While in for consumer products, um, then you are in a single digit euro cost for a small camera module and a computing unit. Parallel to the unit costs, we have also a big difference in terms of integration costs. These integration costs are very low for uh, PC-based systems because it's a very well-established market with many standards, uh, quite some plug and play, even if uh, people say plug and pray, uh, but uh, for the consumer systems, um, this, uh, the integration costs are very, very high because in some cases you need to design your board, you need to uh, take care of the connection of your imager to you know, customize the operating system, the communication protocols, and so on. 
we are seeing that PC-based systems are usually used for one to 100 units, while at the same time, um, consumer embedded vision um, starts with tens of thousands of units up to millions of units. So the gap between hundreds and the tens of thousands, this is where we see the industrial embedded vision uh, gap. Companies that decide to embrace embedded vision most of the time keep the current portfolio. They add new products built with embedded vision that allow them to uh, increase production volume and also sales volumes overall. There is um, an overlap. So uh, some uh, products that were sold using PC-based systems do get uh, built using embedded systems, but we see this portfolio extensions most of the time. Let's have a look at the structure of a typical embedded device. Usually you will find the following components. We have the main components. This is the CPU, the RAM, and the GPU. Since we are talking about embedded vision, you have obviously image acquisition. This um, is either camera module or it could be a sensor connected directly to the board. You need a communication module. And then if you're using deep learning, there are several hardware deep learning accelerators. The AI hardware acceleration landscape is very fragmented. This is a representation of some of the companies who are involved either on the hardware or on the software side of it uh, from uh, mid of 2019. Um, so we can see that a lot of innovation is going on, but also that um, there is still lots of work to be done in terms of standardization and uh, uh, software support. And on top of all these hardware components, one software component is still missing, and this is the operating system. These four operating systems are very widely used on embedded systems. And as you can see, Android and iOS, for example, these come from the consumer world. The reason for that is, for example, in logistics, um, tablets are very widely used. And the most affordable tablets that you can find are um, Android-based, for example. Uh, let's take a very realistic situation where you have, for example, five different um, image acquisition modules to choose from, and uh, you have three different options for your CPU, GPU, and RAM, and then you have um, three different um, hardware accelerators to use, plus maybe five uh, different um, communication modules, and you still have your four operating systems. This would lead all together to 900 possible configurations. This makes handling all these different hardware configurations from a software perspective very challenging and an absolute headache. Now we have our embedded system with hardware plus the operating system. And then on top of that, uh, we want to run our embedded vision software. Let's have a look at the requirements pyramid uh, for choosing this uh, vision software. As, as basement um, or foundation of this pyramid, it's the compatibility of the software with a maximum number of hardware combinations because you want to be free in your hardware design today and also in the future. On the second layer of the uh, pyramid, we have uh, development requirements, and these are from a developer's point of view. You want to evaluate the feasibility and the viability of your solution as quickly as possible. So the first criteria is low entry barriers for developers and thus the possibility for them to do an evaluation and uh, create a prototype in a short period of time with, for example, uh, pre-compiled ready to use uh, system images for popular embedded platforms. The uh, second criteria is um, ease of use and easy to integrate because for embedded you would you want to be able to do remote debugging, you want to do easy deployment, um, you want to have uh, tools for visualization and graphical helping that allows you to increase your productivity across the whole development process. The third criteria is the access to the latest technologies. We've seen earlier that uh, the embedded um, environment uh, is experiencing a lot of innovation at the moment. So whatever software is chosen, it must be very actively maintained, have a short release cycles, 
and integrate always latest uh, research results. The next criteria is robustness. Uh, since we are talking about industrial uh, embedded vision, and this is a big difference with consumer solutions, um, in the industry we have a requirement of very well tested, performant and robust tools because failure is very, very expensive. And the last criteria is professional support. Um, let's say that you have an issue and uh, the production line stopped, then you require a validated um, solution within a short period of time, ideally defined within a service level agreement uh, so that you can uh, solve your problem. On the last level of the pyramid, we have um, requirements from a management uh, point of view. And the first criteria is one-stop shopping. We've seen that the integration costs are uh, way higher with embedded systems. So changing the tooling is very costly. You, would, you want to leverage the investments and the time already spent. So um, the software toolbox must allow the development of a wide range of uh, vision application and uh, should be suitable for prototyping and for production systems at the same time. The second criteria is scalability. We've seen earlier that embedded systems are being used for production volumes from a couple of hundreds to um, tens of thousands of systems. You should be able to keep the same software when you will be scaling up your production um, towards higher volumes. The third criteria is long-term availability of the software. Um, so in consumer, you have a new version of the product every two years. In the uh, industry, um, you know, it's at least five years, sometimes 10 years. We have situations where customers are still buying our software um, from 20 years ago. So you want to ensure that you have uh, long-term availability and support for the software uh, for the exact same software versions. The next criteria is cost-benefit ratio, since you want to ensure that you have a very fast time to market in this uh, competitive um, field in the embedded world. And the last criteria is legal security. The solution toolbox that you choose um, must allow you to um, develop um, applications for commercial purposes and um, you, you need to ensure that all intellectual properties are being respected. So based on the uh, pyramid requirements um, that we uh, went through earlier, if we have a look at um, in the use cases in which open source is being used and the feedback that we get from our clients, we see that uh, for embedded um, Open source is being used very widely for by students uh, for uh, POCs and research purposes. And uh, we see a lot of work also um, to basically make newest hardware usable, but without any pretensions uh, on long-term support. But um, mainly the feedback that we are getting is that um, the solutions, open source solutions are not optimized for industrial use cases and requirements in terms of um, speed, accuracy, and robustness. Let's summarize the key takeaways of this presentation. The first point is embedded vision is a growing and high potential market. Especially at this time with uh, negative market prognosis, investing into embedded vision uh, could be a very profitable um, strategic move. The second point is that embedded price performance ratio has been decreasing rapidly and will keep decreasing in the next years, meaning that this increased uh, performance at the same price or lower price will open new fields of use for embedded vision. Third point, deep learning is a very important key technology for embedded devices and uh, through different hardware accelerators We've seen embedded systems um, catching up with uh, PC-based systems. Fourth point, choosing the right vision software has a huge influence on your long-term options. You want to make sure that you keep your options open uh, for the future, especially since the embedded um, environment is currently very innovative, 
and, and, and changing at a fast pace. So whatever new equipments come out in the future, whatever new technologies or um, findings, uh, you want to make sure that your vision software is going to be uh, compatible with them and incorporate these new um, uh, findings. Last point, commercial and open source software have different targets and uh, especially if you are focusing on um, industrial use cases and you have strong requirements in terms of speed and accuracy and robustness. For the next couple of years, we see at MBTech two very strong trends. The first one is that more and more consumer electronic hardware components will be used in industrial products. It's uh, partly already the case today with um, ARM CPUs who come from mobile phones. We expect this move to strengthen and to expand to additional components. Um, there are limitations though, and uh, there is still a lot of work to be done, especially in terms of uh, standardization of these components and long-term availability. Um, in the consumer world, you have one product, new product every year or every second year, while in the industry it's five times that period. The second uh, very strong trend is that we won't be speaking about edge or cloud computing, but edge and cloud computing. Um, this, is, this will be due to the fact that uh, deep learning inference is uh, getting very popular in embedded devices thanks to hardware accelerators, and the performance is almost on par with uh, PC systems. So this will change the use of deep learning in industrial applications, with inference being done on edge, while training will be um, done in the cloud, be it being private or public cloud. So vision software must be ready for edge, PC, and cloud computing. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found uh, interesting and useful information in this presentation. Um, the current format does not allow for interactive Q&A session, but you can send your questions and remarks to info at mvtech.com. Um, me and my colleagues will be reading them and we will answer every email we get there. In the meantime, uh, you will find more information on uh, our website, mvtech.com. And uh, I hope to see you next year at the uh, uh, Machine Vision Conference. Take care. Bye-bye.